Welcome everyone. Uh, I am Amul Safegar and I am happy to deliver today's guest lecture on professional resume development. Happy to be a part of Bharti Vidyapit Team University, uh, which was started by Mr. Patang Rao Kadam, Honorary Sri Patang Rao Kadam Ji, uh, way back in 1964. Let us start with the topic. Uh, we are going to discuss all about professional resume development. Let's take one step ahead. We need to understand the psychology of the employer. What is his expectation about you while he is going through your resume? In plain and simple words, we can say it is a first impression of yours before you actually meet the employer. Now, what I mean by that is, uh, if you see the prospective employer has never met you and he is just going to understand you based on whatever you have written or whatever you are presenting to him via either a paper or a video format. Let's go one step ahead. I've told that uh, there are around 70% of you who are already working somewhere and 30% of you who are pursuing education and will be looking for a newer job. Uh, considering this, we will be dividing the topic or the slides accordingly where some parts would be considered for developing a resume which is with an experience criteria and some part with just focusing on your skill sets which would be required. Now you need to understand one thing very carefully that when you are applying to a particular organization or a vacancy, it is not only you alone who is doing it. You have got competition around. So if you say you are applying, your resume is one of those many who have applied for it. And what I mean by that is you need to stand out. Unless and until your resume stands out, it may not be creating that sufficient impact for an employer to choose you for the next level. Now, what I mean by choose you, he's going to do some calculations. He's going to see multiple factors in your resume to make sure that you are one of those shortlisted ones. So how it happens is when your resume goes in, it's going to be studied around. It's going to be seen around by employers and he's going to make some shortlists out there. What I mean by shortlist? He's going to do some matchmaking with your experience, your key skills, and what is required for that particular vacancy. Now, if we understand an employer correctly, there would be a team of placement agencies who would be screening it beforehand. It would be later screened by some junior HR representative, and then it will be passed on ahead to the actual person who is going to take a decision. Now, in all this process, if you do not stand up, if your resume does not stand out, it is going to be very difficult for you to get to the next round. When I mean it is basically about your resume generating sufficient interest for the person to call you for an interview. It is basically a ticket to your next round. Now, understanding this very clearly, your resume has to, one, look good. It should have all that criterias or rather all that requirements of that vacancy which your resume is trying to fulfill around. Let's go to the next step and see the history of resume building. Now when we talk about resume building, uh, I just share with you some story where the first resume was built or rather was written in the year 1481 to 1482 and that was, uh, that was recorded as being written by Mr. Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, and it's been around 542 years since then. Now, in all these years together, there's been a change in how resumes are written. That time it was majorly a letter focusing and highlighting on what the skill sets are, what are the things which are required to be showcased around and so on. Now, when I mean by Leonardo da Vinci writing a resume to be given to someone, that person was someone who was a Duke of Milan for the year 1494 to 1499. Now, it is important that you send an introduction and that should look good. Over these 500 plus years, resume building has changed from point A to point Z now. Now, let's see what history does the resume building or the CV building has. In earlier days, it was handwritten. So, when we say uh, sometimes if you're from a 
uh, background of art or if your background from uh, if you're having a background in calligraphy and something of that kind i would still recommend that you write a calligraphically written uh, paper resume but not for all you know streams and all fields across let's go one step ahead after handwritten resumes started flourishing there was a time when the typewriters came in and people started uh, uh, printing or typing the resumes or uh, going to a type typist and getting it typed right and then that started circulating days passed by and then we had computers and computer printouts so why i'm telling you this history because there is a change which has happened in last 500 years and if you have to adopt to change to stand out so if you still send a computer printout or a typewritten uh, resume you're just falling behind your competition around which we earlier focused on you should stand out and that should be your ticket to the next round or the next round of interview let's go one step ahead after computer printouts somebody came up with an idea why don't i attach my photo around it so if i'm attaching my photo to a, a resume a person is able to visualize me apart from the text which is written over there now yes audio and visual plays a very important role if a person is able to visualize you at the time he's reading your resume or your skill sets it would create a impact now post this things changed further and uh, instead of sending a physical envelope resume people started sending pdf files emails and so on so this pdf files could ideally have links links to your work links to your content to your videos to your data which a person can access with the help of a digital file things progressed further where we're talking about video resumes video resumes came into picture around 10 to 10 years before and people started creating videos of their own now what i mean by a video resume is it is something which is compact 60 seconds to 120 seconds maximum where you're talking about yourself your key skill sets uh, your achievements and that is the audio visual representation it is much more valuable much more important uh, because you're expressing yourself in that video it is not somebody who is reading through a text that you've written understanding based on his ability and then making a choice now such kind of video resumes first came into picture when we talked about uh, all those jobs which are sales oriented which are customer facing where personality makes uh, other personality matters over there these people started making video resumes first but now video resumes have become pretty common and they are being available as an option in nokri.com sites or let's say linkedin you can always tag and attach your video resume so what i mean to say over here is if you're sending a paper resume a handwritten or a typewritten or a computer printout and somebody of your competition actually sending a, a video resume uh, the competition is going to kill you even if you are too qualified than the other person who was selected it is about presenting yourself it is about showcasing it in a very correct way to the person you are or the, for the vacancy that you are looking for. Let's go one step ahead. Online video resume. Online video resume is where you are not sending a video file in specific. You have made a link, you have uploaded it somewhere and you are sharing it across to the corresponding person to look at it. Now, video resumes has got different patches to it. It can contain only you talking about something it could contain a video of your project it could contain a video of your you know academic project as well anything and everything that you would wish to showcase to the person so that he can relate it to a corresponding job or a vacancy that's way that's the way we convey whatever you can before you actually get to meet the employer let's go one step ahead over here when you're talking and understanding the expectations of an employer when he's trying to go through your resume he's trying to understand what you've written uh, as i shared if you have typed it he will have to go through it but at least make sure that it is formatted in a correct way so that uh, he doesn't have to look around and search through data or search through points which are there let's say candidate has majorly mentioned these parameters in a resume and that is what is expected to be written while a person is trying to see a resume one is the skill sets second one is the proficiency third one is the current roles and responsibilities and relevant experience 
let me go point wise when i mean skill set you must be having a skill set in a particular software a particular uh, program a particular uh, data around over there and you need to express them into a proficiency index let's say you know a particular software of cad cam by the name of let's say uh, proe or creo or unigraphics or solidworks in that case you need to always mention your proficiency level you cannot just keep on writing the softwares that you know without mentioning the proficiency if we say i'll show you some examples as well when we are talking about things uh, which are about how do we explain and express the proficiency levels out there now if we see in this case the second part which is roles and responsibilities many times we mistakes roles and responsibilities with the designations now designation is a is the thing which you are working in the, the roles and responsibilities that you perform in your current job are more important than your designation because designations may vary but roles and responsibilities that you mention are being looked forward by the employer so that he can make a match we're talking about relevant experience also if you have a, a generally there is again a scenario where you make one resume and then you shoot it to different people try to avoid this because every vacancy every job profile is different and you are going to be matched with that job profile let's say for example there is a requirement of a particular skill set a particular proficiency level and a requirement of a particular role and responsibility now your resume is going to be a apple to apple type of comparison between what you know and what the job demands now when we are talking about such matching and imagine that you are sending one common resume to all those vacancies that you are applying to try to see and understand the vacancy try to match or rather try to understand what kind of skill sets would that particular vacancy require and redraft your resume i am not telling you to actually change it altogether but you can always redraft certain parameters so that there is a better matchmaking done between the vacancy and you your resume and that will help you crack it to the next level where the expectations of the employer are matching with uh, whatever you have written in your resume so whenever you apply make sure that you apply understanding the vacancies around let's go one step ahead now in this case there are people from different streams that could be seeing this video and uh, for every particular stream it is different you cannot have a standard format of a resume saying okay first write your name contact number details and uh, just write the experience around. let's say if you talk about energy segment if you're talking about aerospace hospitality it is altogether different there are parameters that a person would be looking at and you need to highlight those right parameters across if you highlight the parameters right if your resume is highlighted well it's going to make sure that you crack on to the second round but never copy paste a resume of your friend who's from a different field take it around make some modifications and then submit it try to build your own ones we'll, we'll be also going through things where we'll be showcasing and explaining you about how to make a resume what are the templates available and how could you actually access them and build a resume from yourself now if you got a pen and paper with you that will be really helpful because whatever we are going to have and discuss further is going to have some impact on what exactly you are doing and how do you write your own resume or what pointers are to be taken into consideration let's go one step back over here if you got your pens and papers ready we're talking about these four parameters if we could analyze and note it down it will help you in actually uh, typing it around at a later point. Now, we are talking about five key parameters, five key skills. Do not make a list of skills. Just make the top five and that should be sufficient. And try to see that that top five skills are matching with the vacancy requirement. If you are, let's say, if you are writing a particular skill set which is not going to match with that particular vacancy or that particular job, it's of no use. And writing too many skill sets is going to make sure that uh, the employer feels that okay he is writing too much but we really do not know what skill or what efficiency or proficiency level that he is at 
So if you got a pen and paper, write five skills that you would want to showcase or rather you feel are the most important that you possess and can be written in your resumes. We'll be seeing how that skills are to be rated. Now, if you have got these five skills on your paper, just make sure that what is the proficiency level? Maybe on a scale of zero to 10, you can just mention it across, okay? My proficiency in, let's say, a particular language. Maybe you may be knowing around three to four languages. And your proficiency in, let's say, English is eight or in Marathi is nine. So you can always mention that. A skill set tagged to a proficiency level which is definitely going to add value because he is not in a question mark where he tries, okay, he's written English, Hindi, Marathi, French, German, but he's not exactly aware about what is your proficiency level. Just writing a skill set without a level indicator is going to be slightly tough for him to understand because he's not knowing you, he's never seen you, whatever he's trying to understand is just based on your paper or your video. Let's go next. Now, when we're talking about expectations for different variety of jobs and skill sets, talk about sales and customer facing job. He may not be really interested about what are your skill sets in, uh, you know, graphic design or how you have been uh, uh, in coding or how you are being doing into a particular skill set, which is not going to be useful for you in customer facing type of abilities. Now, as I said, again, do not copy paste resumes as is. You may take a reference, but again, there are sites, there are templates available for your own domain. You could be from a field of photography. You could be from a field of, uh, you know, content writing. There are templates. If you have to copy, if you have to take a reference, take a reference of a template that is meant and that is from your industry line or domain. Now, we are just seeing a comparison. Just try to compare that, okay, somebody from a sales or a customer facing job writing his resume and somebody from a back office or coding and development job writing his resume. These are altogether different scenarios where a guy from a back office or a coding development site has to mention on his software skill sets, his ability to write programs, his, his previous experience in that field. It does not matter whether he is good at communications, if he is good at uh, interacting with cust end customers, that skill sets may be on a lower side, but we can always have those skill sets which are to be highlighted corresponding to a vacancy. The matchmaking is only help and solve the purpose. Formatting and other things will come to it about how to format your resume, how it should be categorized, how it can be structured well, so that the readability and understanding is clear from the employer's perspective. Let's go one step ahead and these are some of the pointers that I would want to share and mention with you because these are common mistakes or errors that happen. And even if you read it five to seven times, it is likely to happen. So make sure that these mistakes are avoided at all costs. Anything written less or more is fine, but such mistakes, let's say for example, a spelling mistake or a bad grammar would entirely spoil the reading sequence of that particular person. It does not mean that you need to be very proficient about writing or the grammar or the spelling part of it. If you are weak at it, make sure that you get it verified by someone. Just make sure that before the employer or a prospective agency sees it, somebody has gone through it. So he does not get uh, clinked in between and says, okay, he's not good at English and or he's not good at a particular uh, presentation part of it. Sometimes it may happen that you have not taken your resume seriously. That means you have not checked it before sending. And if you want to get it checked, make sure that you get it checked through someone who knows about spellings and related by Get it checked. That means you are serious about what you're doing. Now, many a times it happens that you're exaggerating the truth. You may be good at a particular skill, but you're making sure that you're writing too much about it. You are, um, what is going to happen is that it is going to make sure that you close this round, you get selected for a short list. But this point in your resume is going to be a backlash 
when it comes to an actual interview because the person is going to ask you about whatever you have written and if there is a mismatch then you lose your opportunity. So we are talking about uh, being precise to the point, make sure that you highlight what you have but do not exaggerate on anything which is a skill set. Poor formatting, if you, think about, if you write, write about texts and paragraphs in your thing, it is very difficult for a person to understand or rather make sense out of it. There is no specific format that you would ideally write this in this column, column, corner side of it or this in this particular section. But at least make sure that these are categorized. So if you see, talk about skill sets, make sure that the, all the skill sets are in one section of that resume. If you talk about your achievements, they are in one segment. So that you know the heading would ideally tell and guide that particular person to actually go through that section that he would be interested in. Copy pasting a common error, you must be from the same branch, same faculty, same college or same stream applying for the same job. Copy pasting is generally going to create a problem because one is you may not understand what you are actually copy pasting. Secondly, when it actually comes to your interview round and he's going to read down, it is going to be difficult out there. So you just have to make sure that you don't randomly copy paste. Make your own words, make your own paragraphs and make sure that it is appealing or interesting enough. It is basically generating interest. A resume is nothing more than a tool to generate an interest for you to be called for the interview. There is nothing else. There is not much to it. Now many a times people mention, miss to mention their achievements. Achievements play an important role that gives a sense of understanding to the employer that okay, these are the achievements, he's worked on to something, he's serious about something, he's dedicated about something. It could be an achievement, it could be a personal achievement like sports. You would be a national player somewhere or you would be, uh, you must have won some awards. It could be personal or professional. It does not mat matter, an achievement is an achievement. So if you mention those achievements, don't make a long list of it, but at least mention those prominent ones which are you know, notable, which is going to create that particular uh, interesting topic around it. Wrong contact info. I have seen people actually writing in a copy paste scenario wrong contact information. He's copy pasted a resume, contact information is of the old guy. He's forgot to change the mobile number or an email address. So make sure that when you send it, the contact information, it could be a typing error. But the typing error is going to cost you a job. So make sure that you are serious about it, wrong contact information is going to land up nowhere. Because even if the person has liked your resume, liked your skill sets, you are unreachable to him. So never make this mistake of putting a wrong contact information. I know you are not making it purposely, but just double check it. Again, once you make a resume, a resume is not a one-time activity that you end of the college days or end of a particular period, you make one resume and then you just keep on shooting it to different employers. For every vacancy that you apply, make sure that you go through your resume, see the matchmaking and change it. It may take some time because it is, but it is not something like, a, a, it's not like a fighter plane where you are just shooting in bullets. You have to make sure that you pinpoint, you lock the target and you then you shoot it because Otherwise, it's just going to be a random bullet. It may hit, it may not hit. And the matching may not happen because a vacancy is of a slightly different category. Maybe somebody has posted accounts plus purchase. And you've written all the experience which is related to accounts. Or somebody is having a purchase department requirement with certain accounting skills. So that really matters about how you coin or customize your resume. Now, including references is slightly tricky. Sometimes including references can be considered incorrect or inappropriate or sometimes including references may be considered as uh, an additional pointer or additional goodie. Now you need to take a call about where that resume is going to land up and what kind of company it is. So it is okay to mention references without contact numbers if required and sometimes you just skip it out. It's, it's an optional thing. If your skill sets are matching, the references are secondary. You can always discuss those references during your interview stage 
when they ask a specific question about it or if the vacancy demands or the vacancy says that okay do let us know two references that we can call and vouch for do mention and do add to it now sometimes hobbies and interests are one critical thing which people say that why should i write and what should i write it could ideally connect you to the employer in a very nice way let's say you're playing a particular sport say football or table tennis or basketball you never know who is reading your resume or you never know because nowadays sports is also being uh, promoted well in uh, companies people like sportsmen joining because there's a kind of player that a sports person gets along there's a kind of dedication that person gets along so it could be hobbies that you could mention just don't mention too many hobbies and just don't mention uh, two random hobbies across you know try to keep a match of around two to three of them something which you have already have some achievement in that is a great thing but mention two or three it relates and helps it makes sure that you break the ice during the the interview round now unappropriate email ids has been a problem all across where uh, you have created in your id in your teenage and you make sure that that id is particularly being carried forward and also attached you know resume when you're sending something as a professional communication you need to make sure that your id resembles that professionalism it could be your first name dot last name at gmail.com it does not matter whether you're having a domain based id or a, a random id but something like coolboy49 at gmail.com would definitely not attach or relate to a professionally sent resume so try to make sure that whatever you are sending and sharing across has got some professionalism to it if you do not have an id create one specifically for that so that it could relate and that unappropriateism is being skipped out of it now couple of mistakes that are again done the resumes are made in a very descriptive fashion and i mean descriptive let's say you saw the last slides there are around 50 or 40 people applying for the same vacancy and imagine a person is actually reading through all the descriptions and paragraphs try to keep it as bulleted as possible try to keep it as twitterized as, as possible you don't have to write a long paragraph about what you're doing if you can just highlight highlight in bullet points okay my role has been so and so i've been response i was responsible for uh, uh, machine design part of it or i was responsible for drafting part of it or in accounting my responsibility was auditing related so try to mention a non descriptive segment which is easy to read easy to understand if it is too descriptive your resume is just going to be read once without any understanding it's going to be kept aside because it's too difficult for a person to go through 30 40 50 resumes and then make sense out of what you have written as a descriptive thing i'll show you some examples about how resumes are written how to categorize things around and so on last thing don't make it too long it is as i told you an invitation or rather a ticket which is just enough which should be just enough to get you that entry spot to your interview it is just it should be just enough to actually create and generate interest if you keep it too long two pages three pages nobody's going to read it. it it should not be a book type scenario if you have something to mention definitely you will get your time in your interview round where you can elaborate on things don't make it too long too long resumes are again kept aside they're not read through only starting one or two pages are read and then a person may or may not read it around try to make it twitterized let's go one step ahead what we saw in these mistakes or these uh, problem statements part of it is where you need to communicate something you need to communicate something before actually meeting the employer and what are those points of communication we typically write over here education should be communicated clearly and crisply with the date of your completion of education if you're still pursuing something make sure you write pursuing and you'll be completing that education by so and so year or month if it is i've seen people that have applied they've got selected and 
or rather they have not got selected they've got called for an interview and then they are realizing that okay this person is yet to complete his degree is this person is yet to complete his course and such kind of things are very difficult to digest because they've spent time money effort in actually selecting you second thing which you should highlight and mention is your technical skill sets so your technical skill sets are to be aligned and highlighted pinpointedly let's say if there's a job of networking and you are doing a certain certification for that maybe a red hat certification or an oracle certification you need to make sure that your certification is pinpointedly addressed noted and mentioned which can relate with the vacancy it is all about your resume being relating to the vacancy of the job if you're applying for a job of a chef all the rest of the skill sets that you have are of no use if your cooking skill sets are not mentioned in that so you need to make sure that your resume and the vacancy skill sets are having an exact match or a near match now there are three things which are to be communicated which are communication skills confidence personality and smartness you definitely cannot share it via paper now it has been commonly used tool where people make their video resumes and they tag it along with their paper resumes because if you can attach this last four segments through your resume you are actually going and sitting in front of him which is much more better than sending a paper and that's going to create an edge for you against the competition of those applying you're definitely going to get some value some edge when they're seeing your paper at the same time they can see your video because other guys must have just sent the paper and you get that additional advantage your your thing is getting selected into the first five or ten of those shortlisted candidates and then based on your skill sets you can crack the job let's go to the next step you should have seen all these uh, methods about right from writing handwriting it around to typewriting it to computer printouts with a photo video resumes sometimes uh, for a call center or related job audio files are asked in different accents now that also plays an important role because you cannot really share your accent on paper so there are certain need based scenarios where a video resume would be very vital if you're doing a applying for a sales job if you're applying for a hospitality job make sure that you have a video resume done so that you get an edge over the other guys if you're applying for a job which is more related to coding which is more related to you know a back office kind of job make sure that your skill sets are highlighted in a way and in a structured format so that the person understands add certifications to it add things which are going to add value uh, when you're talking about experience experience into a particular let's say if you're good at front end and you're just randomly writing uh, certain let's say you're writing php oracle and so on he's not going he's going to get confused about are you a front end guy are you a back end guy your experience shows something else so try to twist the words in such a way that the vacancy that you're applying for relates with your responsibilities of an existing job you're not speaking a lie about it you're just making sure that the words are aligned to the new vacancy that you are applying for it cannot be one standard paragraph about your existing roles and responsibilities which are going to match some profiles some responsibilities are going to change here and there try to have exact match over there video resumes have been making wonders because it's you sitting in front of them it's as good as a first level round it's as good as someone asking you tell me about something about yourself tell me about your project and you're almost there so that's one way of looking at it i'm sharing some softwares as well now this is uh, these are some of the templates which are available in canva canva being a very common sort of different templates for different category of jobs and you can just pull out that particular category fill in the blanks kind of scenario and then you're done color themes could be bright could be uh, you know subtle or it could be normal if you see the one which is on the extreme right that looks dullish that is more of a descriptive thing paragraph scenario 
and if the one thing that you look on the extreme left side of it which is where there is categorized his skill sets his proficiency in an infographic way adding infographics typically help uh, just to give an example when you see an advertisement or when you see a movie trailer what is that that is something like a resume that they have built if you like a product of let's say fruity or any other product which you've seen an advertisement is just for 15 to 20 seconds and in that 15 to 20 seconds an audio visual is making an impact to make sure that you at least step ahead to get the product so it's a similar thing you make a video you make a paper you see a brochure of some product it's nothing but a resume of that product you just have to make sure that it is appealing enough for them to give you a call for your interview there are some more which i have added over here now depending on your profile uh, your profile photo has to change your let's say for example if you have got something from a photographer category here it has to change it sometimes looking flashy does not mean bad it is related to that particular profession if you're a videographer if you're a photographer it would ideally make sense that you have something which is related to that it is it should be more creative enough but if you are a, a coding guy or a back office guy and you create a resume uh, from a template of a photography or a videography guy, it may not gel well with the employee. You need to understand his psychology as well. So there are different templates. The name of the software that I could recommend is Canva. Log on to Canva, you will see n number of templates and make sure that the template is full. One, one and a half or two pages maximum. Don't go beyond that because you know he is just willing to understand you in as a summary the word resume means summary you cannot write a sum a two to three or four pages summary even if you have a large experience maybe 15 20 30 years if i have to make my resume i'll make it of two pages i've got a total experience of around 25 years plus but when it comes to twitterizing it make sure that it is good and mentioned in an infographical way there are highlights mentioned over there but don't expand it unnecessarily it may turn down the employer or the job vacancy as well. So one of the software that I'm recommending is Canva. Ready templates. It will help you and guide you to write it in a very structured and formatted way. Earlier it was a time where we need to actually sit across on Word and get it formatted. Now the life has become easy for us. Let's go to next tools. Life you see in this case, we are talking about video resumes coupled with a choice of your text resume. I don't say that a paper resume is bad. It is and is required. Now, if we see if you can match any of these profiles that is that have been seen across, along with a video, your chances and your edge over your competition increases. Just add a QR code to your video to your resume in case someone says, okay, let me see and let me scan and see his video resume. And your video would pop up and you are actually sitting in front of your prospective employer to so that he visualizes. Now, there's a catch over here. If you're not good at communication skills, do not go for a video resume because you know sometimes you may be camera conscious. Sometimes you may not be able to speak in a way you should be. Now there are diff multiple takes that you have. If you can create one video resume, one minute, great. But if you're really weak and poor in communication skills, try to avoid this and make sure that you have a nice formatted resume. It will still get you to the, to the table. Ultimately, your communication skills matter. You need to work on that. Create a video, it will create wonders. Say 70% of the applications which are done to our offices are generally having video resumes. It's become common nowadays. And if you're not, with the tide, it becomes very difficult for a person to actually, you know, they consider you as outdated. You need to adopt. If you adopt well, things are going to be great. So try to have a resume of any of these fashions suiting your profile, tag a QR code to it and attach a video. One minute video, a 90 seconds video is good enough. You don't have to be very elaborate about it. You can always show photos of your project. You can always show uh, anything that a paper in an audio visual, visual fashion can also. Now, taking an example again of advertisements and movie trailers. It's a movie trailer that you're making. N number of softwares 
n number of online links i'm writing down some links over here which would ideally help you to make a video resume in a very drag and drop fashion you need not be skilled into a, a or proficient into video making these are like drag and drops you talk about it on your mobile get the video in add certain parameters add certain photos of your videos and that will create all the impact required for an employer to shortlist you so i think that's all i got you got a time up kind of warning over here but i can always be connected on linkedin i may not request uh, accept your request on facebook or any other platform but linkedin i'm definitely open if you got any questions around i'll be more than happy to take them uh, thank you once again and best of luck